Last week, I dove into my love of thrifting and how this was instilled in me at a very young age. I thrifted, repurposed, and reused items even before it was the cool thing to do. I went from being completely embarrassed as a young child to loving it as an adult. This is definitely an episode you guys want to check out. Now, in this week's episode, I am going to be interviewing Tara with the Reclaimed Ranch, Tara and her husband go on weekly thrifting missions and find some of the best goods. We are going to talk about how she turned her thrifting into a small business and then created her YouTube channel to showcase her beautiful upcycles. Welcome to the Rescued and Upcycle podcast with weekly inspiration, tips on trying new techniques, and overall, real talk about owning your own DIY business. Now here's your host, Sonnet Ullenbrock. Welcome back to Rescued and Upcycled. I'm your host, Sonnet Ellenbrook. I want to thank you guys all for joining me on my podcast. This is episode 13. And if any of you are new here, what I've been doing is doing an interview of a new guest every other week. So in today's episode, I am really excited to be interviewing Tara with the Reclaimed Ranch. From the moment that I met Tara, I felt like we had so much in common. Our love of thrifting and upcycling, I just felt like we were best friends right from the beginning. So let's go ahead and give a big welcome to Tara. I'm just going to bring her on. Let me do that now. There she is. Hello, Tara. Welcome. (laughs) Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Oh, sure. I am so excited that you're here. I was thinking back to when I first met you. I'm like, uh, it was at uh, Debbie Beard's paint inlay party. And uh, I came running in to dinner. (laughs) It was like, (laughs) it was eventful uh, for me. You know, I, I ended up getting delayed flights. And then when I actually ended up at my Airbnb, they didn't have a room for, or they didn't have my Airbnb, uh, actual key in the lockbox. Uh, so I ended up at uh, dinner very late, um, but we sat across from each other and I just felt like we totally hit it off right away. So yeah. it was like, like we knew each other forever. <laughs> I know it was great. Um, I know. And then one of the first things she said is I want to be, you like said, I want to be your assistant if you ever need help. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, well, I think you live kind of far away, but a thousand miles, it's okay. I know. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, maybe someday we'll see. So maybe virtual, <laughs> right? So, yeah. um, but uh, for my viewers and listeners who haven't had the opportunity to have found you yet, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, um, I was in the dental field for quite a while, over about 22 years. And my oldest son then came to me one year and said, Hey, you're going to be a grandma. So then I quit my job to watch the baby. Um, But being at home, I've always been a hands-on type of person, like working in the dental field. I was working with tools constantly. So I always did DIY projects when I was younger in the home, things like that. Um, So when I'm at home watching baby, I can't just sit still. (laughs) <laughs> I yeah. have to be doing something, you know, I have one of those minds that constantly keep thinking, what can I do next? What can I do next? Um, so I just started upcycling things in my home, like different furniture pieces, um, different smalls. And, and then I was like, oh, this is actually looking pretty good. And then people that would come over would be, wow, you actually made that, you know? Yeah. So then I started making things for friends and family and it kind of just grew from there. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I just have a love for creating. And so I ended up, um, making, getting a booth and making my own things and, uh, has grown into a business. I don't know. It's just crazy. That's awesome. (laughs) So I was always wondering, cause I'm like, I think she stays at home or, you know, like, cause you talk about taking care of your grandchild a lot. And I didn't realize so you were in the dental field. That's that's yes. Orthodontics for 18 years. And then I did general dentistry for two and oral surgery for two. Almost. Wow. Yeah. So (laughs) if you ever need any advice on dental stuff, I'm not a fan of the dentist or orthodontist or um, this mouth is worth a small fortune, by the way. So 
I yes, know. They I all know. are. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. I had braces and I have a very like small mouth. I know this is like, doesn't even pertain to what we're going to be talking about, but I had to have like several teeth. Like I had four of my big teeth pulled and then my wisdom teeth pulled. So I had a lot of teeth pulled. I was never, I was never happy going to the dentist. So I'm glad that you have decided to leave that field and join yeah. us. Well, yeah. <laughs> It's a lot more fun this way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, well, okay. So you started off creating for yourself and mm-hmm. that sounds like a lot, like a lot of people do. They start, you know, doing things for their own home, their friends, their family. Yeah. Um, what actually, like, how did you actually decide, like, I am going to start my small business? Well, <laughs> <laughs> from what my basement, my garage and my uh, storage unit says <laughs> it's a little full. <laughs> yeah. I can't keep everything I make. So yeah, that kind of ended up pushing me, um, to get, to get a booth. And I, I did at one point have a booth for a few months and then I had carpal tunnel issues in my right oh. hand. So I had oh. to have surgery. So I pulled out of that place. And then, um, during the, the big COVID time when everything shut down, I was again, sitting at home with nothing to do, right. um, but projects. And so I started watching YouTube and I'm a sponge. Like I love learning new things. And so watching you, of course, and Heather from create your own cozy, Jamie Ray, um, all these big YouTubers, I was like inspired and was like, maybe I could do this, you know, mm-hmm. um, maybe this is something that I could actually make a business out of. Um, and so eventually I got another booth and it took off really well. And so I ended up getting another booth. <laughs> That's and awesome. So far, yeah, I know it's just like addicting. <laughs> it is. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that means I get to go shopping more, right. And get more things. So, um, but yeah, it just, it just kind of evolved into having a couple booths and I didn't really even know about starting a business until last year. Like okay. that wasn't even on the radar until I was like, okay, I think I've done, I've done this for a little bit long enough and let's see where this goes. Cause my husband's like, okay, when baby gets big enough and has to go to preschool and kindergarten, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, do, are you going to go back to work? And I'm like, oh, so then I started pushing my older son. I'm like, do you want to have another baby? <laughs> So, um, oh my gosh, then he's I not, really is he? No, not oh. yet. No. No. But I'm like, I mean, he's 31, so he could, but no. Okay. <laughs> um, so then I really got thinking, okay, is this the direction I really want to go? I love creating and, and I mm-hmm. said to myself, yeah, so I, I got to get up and do something about it. So yeah, last, um, March is when I actually got the business name. And, um, from there, it's just kind of evolving again. It's just, it's growing little by little. I didn't want it to explode. Um, I just like little growth at a time. (laughs) I agree. I think it's much more manageable when you are growing little by little. And, you know, even before we jumped on here, I kind of talked about that with my own business that, you know, I tackle one thing, I get really good at that. And then I tackle the next thing. And then I just keep on growing and getting bigger and better. So, um, so that's great. I love hearing that. So two, uh, this is like a two part question. First part is like, how long did you have your booths before you actually decided you were a business? Um, I had them, let's see, probably about a year and a half. Okay. So you were just so you know, a business a year and a half ago, <laughs> you just didn't call yourself. Me, yes. I just didn't get the name and the certificate. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Well then the second part of that question, um, I have been dying to know, like, how did you come up with your small business name? The name? Yeah. Like how okay, I, so I was born and raised in the city. Okay. But I am a country girl at heart. Like farm life for me is my dream. And in my first marriage, we actually had a mini farm. We had cows, horses, chickens, ducks, all kinds. And I loved taking care of the animals. Like that was my thing. So um, I've just been drawn to the countryside, the farm life. And so I love looking at old barns, like out in the wheat fields. And, you know, the, they tell a story. They've been on this long journey and, and, 
um, just that weathered gray wood. I just love it. And I don't know if you can see in the background, this wood on my um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. kitchen wall was actually our fence from when I was a little girl because I live <gasps> in the house that I grew up in. Oh. So um, when we tore it down, I was like, I don't want to get rid of it. It's so beautiful. So I ended up putting it on my wall. But oh. so it's it's reclaimed wood yes. is my love. And I want to be on the ranch again. So it's the reclaimed ranch. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> That is awesome. So do you think someday you're going to have your own? Oh, yeah. You yeah. do? Okay. All right. Yes. <laughs> so when the kids are out of the nest, yep, I'm going to get my own farm again. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't want to farm. I don't, I mean, I don't want animals and things like that. But what I do want is like after spending like the last couple of years at Antique Acres, I would love to have something like that, like a yeah. piece of property where I have my house and then I have like a barn like that. I would just love it. So, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I would need ground keepers though. I, I couldn't do it all. <laughs> I like to be my own ground keeper. <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I don't know if I could keep up with, I don't think I can add that to my to-do list every yeah. day. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't have time for that. So, but I would love something like that. So I too, and here in Wisconsin, um, there are so many beautiful old barns. So I definitely have a, yeah, that a warm spot in my heart for that. Yeah. Too. So, yeah. Um, and that's where I came up with the barn quilts because here on the old barns, when you come to Wisconsin, you're going to have to look, there's barn quilts all over the barns. So oh, it's very that's cool. awesome. Yeah. There is actually a map and uh, you can Google like the barn quilt map and you could actually go from barn to barn to barn to see all the different barn quilts. It's really wow. cool. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's I love it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm like, well, I don't know how much time you guys are going to have. You're going to be like thrifting and going to different shops. So we'll yeah. see. Um, so yes. And just for you guys, uh, Tara is attending my event in October. So she will be here in Wisconsin. So, um, so if you guys are attending, uh, you will see her. Um, I know I'm very excited too. So one question I have as well for you, or like, what are some of the challenges that you've experienced now with owning your, you know, your small business? I know you said that you officially became a small business in March, yes. but really you've, it's been like two years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um, definitely. I have like no knowledge of the business world. Like I don't like taxes freak me out. My husband deals with all that. Um, so that's kind of what stopped me from doing the business in the first place for so many years was the business side of it. Like, how mm -hmm. do I make a budget? Cause I have never budgeted in my life. If I want something, I get it. Like, um, and then the taxes and all the, the accounting and all that stuff. So he definitely has helped me with that part of it so okay. that I can be the creative. Um, cause that's my thing. I'm a doer. Like mm -hmm. I can, I want to make the things, but I don't want to have to be the manager of the, right. the business. <laughs> right. So that's definitely one of the challenges. Um, marketing has been another one trying to get out, which you're helping in your group Yeah. But on that social media, because that's free public market marketing for your business. Um, but yeah, just uh, getting things or getting your name out into the community so that people know who you are, where you are and um where they can find you so mm -hmm. i know and i think that's a struggle for every small business owner especially when you have a storefront uh, even an online store um i just remember the day that i opened my online store i was like okay i'm gonna hit publish i'm gonna do it and i hit publish and i was like where are the orders you know like i sat there and i'm just like it was crickets you know and i'm like I realized very quickly, like, nobody knows that you just hit publish. <laughs> so, right, right. Like, I did the same thing. I'm like, why aren't I getting any orders? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, you have to work for it. And uh, so, yes, that is so key. And 
even like at the different uh, vendor locations that I have, so often they think they, as in other vendors within the building, think that that business should do all the your marketing. No, you need to step up and do your own marketing. And that's what I really reinforce in my membership group is that, yes, you have to do your own marketing because you can't rely on somebody else to bring business to your storefront. So. No. No, you can't. <laughs> I know it's it's crazy to think that, but I know. I know. <laughs> Especially but, the employees that work there, they're like, "What? You want me yeah. to do what?" <laughs> I know exactly. No, that's what it's still your responsibilities. So, mm -hmm. all right. So that's been one of your biggest challenges. So, um, what now? Uh, one thing that I were, you know, like hanging out with you and chatting with you and being in the group with you, you always like talk about how you go thrifting with your husband. So <laughs> I know your husband helps with the accounting aspect of it, but tell me, how did you drag him along on your thrifting missions? Because <laughs> honestly, number one, I don't think I could bring my husband. He'd be like, why are you buying that? You don't need it. <laughs> My cart pictures that I, I share with my viewers would never be this high, like up in the air if my husband was with. So talk to me, girl. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, he had never like stepped foot in thrift stores before me. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Which I thought was funny. So the way it kind of got started was I was like, okay, see ya. I'm going thrifting, you know? And, um, and then he's just sitting at home. He's like, well, this is no fun. He's like, we're both uh, time people in our love language. Like we spend time together. Okay. And so he's like, okay, fine. I'll just, I'll just kind of tag along and see. Same thing. He was like, why are you grabbing that? What, what are you going to, but when he sees the finished product, he's like, wow. So he's, we're the creative mind where we can see the vision of where this could go. He is absolutely not. He's all numbers and you know, facts and science. And, and so, yeah. Um, so he gets intrigued on the things that I pick and wants to know, okay, well, what are you going to do with this? And then he got addicted to getting on Facebook marketplace and finding furniture pieces for me. He kept seeing it, sending me like all these, I'm like, will you get off a of marketplace? Oh my <laughs> gosh. I need your husband. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, what about this? What about that? But he is, um, a book person. He loves reading books. And so now when we go to the bins, he goes straight to the book bins, gets all of these old antique books um, that he wants in his collection. And he just, you know, that's, that's his thing. That's his niche. So that's awesome. Yeah. But now he's gotten to the point to where he's like, okay, my wife will like that. I'm going to pick it up for her or, you know, so it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely one of our date days. Every Tuesday we like to go out and hang out and thrift and have lunch and <laughs> love it. Yeah, it's fun. Okay. So I have to make note of that. Don't text on Tuesday. You said Tuesdays, right? Oh, you can text whatever. <laughs> oh, that's I awesome. still answer them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so have you always had a love of thrifting then, or was it just, it just started because you started doing stuff in your house and then you needed items to continue on with upcycling? Yeah, I was like you, like thrifting, especially going into a thrift store at, as a teenager. I might be dating myself, but um, it was not cool back then at mm -hmm. all. And so I was literally mortified to go into thrift stores. But my grandma always went into there, so I'd have to go with her. And um, as I got older and, yeah, started doing, creating things, I started um, going after church with my dad to thrift stores and we would go to antique stores and vendor malls. And that's how we spent our time together. And so we really connected through that. And, um, I was just astonished at what I could find at a thrift store, like so many brand name things for a fraction of the price. I was like, this is amazing. What was I thinking when I was a kid? You know, right. um, you get past that, that stage of what people think about you, right. you know, um, and I'm like, I'm at that stage. I don't care where I get it. I can get it on the side of the road. It, you know, I'm going to make something cool out of it. Yeah. So yeah, it, it definitely took several years of getting over that. What do people think of me? And I have to have the highest and brand names. And that's not what I am anymore. I, right. I don't care. <laughs> no, I know. I know. So, it, 
Yeah. So, and it's amazing because I, I do hang out with, um, a group of gals and they're, um, you know, very into fashion and like the latest trends. And so it's funny, we'll go out to dinner and I'll have a shirt on and they'll be like, where did you get that? And I'll be like, Goodwill it was like two ninety nine, And now I've gotten a little bit more savvy about using Google lens. Um, so if you guys don't know what Google lens is, bring up Google and there's like a little lens, click it. And you take a photo of the item and it will tell you where it's from. Um, and so now I have found a lot of different things from like anthropology or, you know, now I'm kind of getting better at like the brand names just because I hang out with them so often. Right. So. <laughs> but it's funny because some of the, it's amazing. Like people are so, it's so easy for people to dispose of things or like get rid of items. So they'll buy something and they'll want it and then they really don't want it. So many times like the clothing is used one time they get rid of it. It's like brand new and they have spent like anywhere like upwards of 60, $70 and then they donate it. And that's exactly it with home decor. Um, right. so we're like rescuing. So sometimes I even buy items and just resell, you know, like as is. And, right. um, but I do really prefer upcycling. So, yeah, but. I'm a, I'm a person. I love to recycle things if I can, or use as much as I possible. I'm the person that takes the soap bar and the little piece that people usually throw away. <laughs> I stick it on top of the new one. So I don't waste it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I like rescuing things that otherwise would end up in a landfill, which is ridiculous to me, you know, mm -hmm. when yeah. they can have a full new life as something else. So absolutely. So uh, tell me this, you know, while you're all thrifting, have you become, a, you know, more, do you look for specific items or are you, it's just a free for all, like, you know, whatever I'm feeling today or whatever I find. It's definitely now targeted because I, when I first started, like I said, I don't have a budget <laughs> <laughs> and I would spend so much money. And that's how I ended up with my basement, my storage unit, my garage being completely full. Cause I was like, I know exactly what I can do with this, but then I would put it down there and never do it. So, right. um, I am very much more, I need, I'm looking for a lampshade or I'm looking for some glassware for a different piece to upcycle or yeah, I definitely go in and I'm very picky on what I get now. Um, I'm more geared towards antiques and um, fine dishware, things like that. But then I love, I love me an old box that I could, you know, stamp on or upcycle or decoupage or small tables. That's what seems to be selling right now is not the big, so much the big furniture. It's the smalls, like you said. Um, so people are still just, there, I don't know the the market this this time of year or or this year in an all um, is very strange. It's just it goes up and then it just dives. And mm -hmm. for some reason, smalls are a consistent part of that. Like they just continue to get the smalls, but furniture is is an up and down thing. So right. yeah, I um, I'm just looking for smalls basically when okay. I go thrifting that topic came up in conversation when we were all the vendors had a little moment to breathe at antique acres that it's amazing that the furniture that we have and we upcycle it's like it is stood the test of time it was made you know most of it's vintage or antique but it is solid wood mm -hmm. it is got like it has got dovetailed core you know like everything is like so good about it it is sturdy it's gonna last another hundred years and yet the younger generation they're going to ikea and they're right. getting press board and they're spending an absolute fortune on something that's going to fall apart in a year yeah and, so, and end up in the dump <laughs> yes and it's exactly and there's no way that we're going to upcycle that stuff because, oh no no i won't um, even go near it <laughs> it's going to fall apart and so we you know i always think like why aren't they why aren't they thinking like that? That why don't they have that mindset? Because they should. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I keep trying to instill that in my children. Like, 
this is like my daughter, like we picked out her furniture. We found it at um, one of the local thrift stores, but it's absolutely gorgeous. She picked out the colors, the hardware, everything. And I, I absolutely love it. So I hope that as they, she moves out, that that continues on yes. <laughs> and you she doesn't go to I, yes, like, I know. Daughter, yeah she's nine but she loves to go thrifting with me like I've this is what I want her to do I want her to be able to DIY on her own I want her to feel confident and independent and so I take her thrifting with me and I say okay here's the dresser we're gonna we're gonna upcycle this for your bedroom and it was antique you know all of her pieces are pretty much antique it, the same exact thing so um She's definitely going to have that mindset of, I can do that without having to spend $700, you know, mm -hmm. on a dresser that's not going to last. So right. I've always taught her, take care of your things and they'll last forever. Right. I know. And with my daughter too, she used to like, uh, what? When she was little, like at nine, she loved going thrifting with me. But then she got to the age where she was like, I don't know. She was went through that whole embarrassment, you know, stage that I kind of mentioned um, in my previous episode. But then now all of a sudden it's like the cool thing for all the high schoolers. So yes. I, you know, I had asked her like several times, do you want to go to the bins with me? Oh, no. All of a sudden, Hey, you want to go to the bins? I'm like, what changed? And then I found out like all these people from her high school, that's what they do for their yeah. part of their summer jobs is they go there, they pick, and but theirs is all clothing and then they resell all this clothing. Right. So yeah. Yeah. But same with our our daughter. She's uh Ruby is 16. Same thing. She's like, I'll go to the bins with you because she knows she can get a cart full for just like 10 bucks, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's exactly it. She's like, she'll say to me, like, can I get this? I'm like, do you like it? Do you love it? I mean, are you going to wear it? These are things that you have to ask yourself. And if you're not going to wear it, then no, don't get it. But <laughs> yeah, she always is getting cartfuls of stuff too. And she has some of the best stuff. Like we found Lululemon there. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So she was like, oh my gosh, look at, I found Lululemon. How did that, <laughs> how did that, nobody else find it? I'm like, because there's a ton of clothes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, do you have specific favorite spots that you guys thrift at or do you try do you like just go to the same spots or do you try new spots? Are you on the hunt for new spots? Debbie, my friend, um got me onto this new thrift store. It's called the Fitty Club. And you pay a membership of 149 a year and you go in and whatever piece you get is 50 cents. So each piece is 50 cents. So you can have up to 250 items per month. So um, that might be That's my awesome. favorite new one because I was like, you can get a chair for 50 cents and upcycle it, you know, or a bed mm -hmm. or they have furniture. They have everything. It's like going to the Goodwill bins on steroids, but hardly anybody there. So I was like, this is cool. <laughs> Where do they get all their pieces? Do people donate I don't them? honestly know, but okay. I saw their storage unit mm -hmm. and it was floor to ceiling, like for really? all the way back from the store. And I'm like, where do you guys get all your donations? I don't understand. Yeah. But it's it's also helping men um, become sober, gives them jobs and kind of gets them on their feet. So there's okay. a purpose behind it. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of church ones that I like to go to. Um, and then of course, when summer hits, I kind of stay away from the stores and hit the yard sales and estate sales. So I know I have to start hitting up yard sales big time because like it's the spring and then they stop, you know, like then they dwindle off as the summer yep. goes on. It's the early ones that are really good. Really and I good. Just have yeah. A, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't had time. So <laughs> yes. Um, I also have, uh, one other question. Cause this, the day that this happened to me, I almost fell over. Um, uh, has anyone recognized you yet while you're been out thrifting? No. <laughs> Okay. I'm just a wee baby on YouTube. Oh, you are not. Your channel is growing like crazy. Uh, it so. is growing, but I don't, that's kind of, cause I was like, when I went, when I met you at Debbie Beard's paint and light thing, I was like in awe of all the YouTubers, like you and Jamie Ray. And, you know, I was the fangirl. I was like, oh my gosh. And then I'm like, oh, somebody did that to me. I don't know how I would take it. <laughs> That's funny. I know. Like the the first time, like 
somebody like, oh my God, Sonnet? Like I, and I was at the bins. And so I, and here I was like, oh my, they know me? Like that at first I was like, you know, like, how do they know me? And then all of a sudden they're like, I watch you all the time. And I'm like, oh yeah, duh. Yeah. You're on. Yeah. <laughs> you're on YouTube, you know, but. Um, well, actually in our, in our group was the first one um, that recognized me. I can't remember her name, but she was like, oh, there's Tara from the Reclaim Ranch. And so when we got done, I ran downstairs and said, honey, somebody recognized me. <laughs> oh my gosh. And more and more people will, you know, as your channel grows, yeah, um, definitely sure. more and more. So I was just wondering, like, has it happened yet? So, <laughs> not yet. Not out in the wild. No, not out in the wild. I love it. Oh, it's like when I'm looking for Ironstone out in the wild. You yes. know, like, oh, yeah. yeah. That's but. awesome. Okay. So I found out how your business started, how you, you know, you uh, grew to love thrifting. How did your YouTube journey actually begin? Well, um, obviously, I was creating because I had to have something for my booths. And so while I create, I would watch YouTube. Yeah, and of course, I would watch you and Heather and Heather really um, inspired me quite a bit because I watched her before she even had a booth. And then um, so it was kind of fun. We were just creating together, you know, and then she's like, I think I'm going to get a booth. <laughs> and I'm like, you go, girl. <laughs> That's awesome. And then um, once she started like showing the the aspects of the business part of the booth, I was like, that's so cool. I'm like, she's kind of my age. You're a little younger, but kind of my age. And I'm like, I can probably do this. I can probably just hit record. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it. Yes. I could do it. And so I was like, you know, I'm not out to make a big channel. I'm not out to, to make a lot of money on YouTube. My purpose is to teach. I mm -hmm. love teaching. I used to teach um, crafting at assisted living places. And so if somebody can watch my channel and, and get some knowledge that they never knew, that's that's my goal. Like mm -hmm. I've, I've done what I've wanted to do. And so I was like, OK, we're just going to do it. Just dive right on in. And ever since then, you know, it's been a year. May 6th was my first YouTube video. Awesome. And so, yeah, it's it's grown beyond what I even could imagine. Um, and so I, I just hope to keep growing and keep teaching. And, and, you know, I love answering questions with the viewers and it's just been fun. So yeah, I went from one video a week to two now and uh, it's definitely keeping me on my toes. <laughs> So one of my favorite videos that you did, well, I have numerous, I actually, um, but the recent one that you did of your fridge. So if you guys oh. haven't seen this yet, <laughs> Tara took a piece of decoupage paper. It's of a horse and she put it on her fridge. It's, it's absolutely outstanding. So what paper was it that you used again? It was, uh, from whimsical designs. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. I was like, that's just one thing. I just kind of look around the house and get a hair at my rear and go, let's start a polish the fridge today or let's paint some cabinets or right. yeah. <laughs> let's redo a oh bathroom. <laughs> a hair up your rear. I say a bug up my butt. I always say that. I get a bug up my butt and then I'm like, I got to do something. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that is one video that I absolutely love. Another one I have to ask. So um, Tara did a video last year where she used milk paint on her deck. How did that hold up over winter? I was going to tell you about that. It's actually held up really well. Okay. Now I've got three dogs. They yep. are crazy. So you can see, you know, when they jump off the deck or jump on the deck or whatever. But as far as the the milk paint and the tongue oil, like none of it's peeling. It's completely, okay. it's great. I am really impressed with it. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. Cause we get snow, we get all kinds yeah. of weather here. And so I am, yeah, it's definitely okay. a winner for me. For sure. I am going to try it then on our deck. So mm -hmm. um, long story short, the reason that intrigued me when I saw that video is because up North on our deck, 
I, the very first year uh, we were there, I ended up, um, Bear had come out with this like deck stain. I did that. And then within one winter, the entire deck, it like was not stained. So it never like penetrated the wood. And we had, you know, like properly cleaned it and everything. It actually like flaked off. I'm like, it's more like paint than stain as, but it went, it felt like when I put it on, it was stain. So then I went back and they're like, oh, it was, oh yeah, that all got recalled, you know? So then we were kind of gun shy about it, you know, doing it again. And then I used Sherwin Williams, um, deck stain that held up much longer, but, and I get you have to restain things like, but I'm like, well, if it could last more than like a couple of years, that would be awesome. So. Right. And not flake off. Mine did the right. same exact thing. I, I stained the deck every year, but it was just peeling off. Like, mm -hmm. like you didn't prep the surface, you know, it just, it was weird. But My yeah, God. this milk paint, it definitely seeps down in the grain and I, I'm impressed. I would Very definitely cool. recommend it. <laughs> And it was Fusion's milk paint? Fusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm sure any milk paint, sweet pickens, or, you know, would do the same thing. So Right. Because what I noticed, too, that I feel like when I use, uh, I've only used Fusion a couple times, but when I use sweet pickens, it almost like it hardens. And it like it's like rock salad. And I think once it's sealed, it's even better. So Yeah. 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 Um, I know I have been dabbling with both of the milk paints and I'm loving it. I just, now I have so much to play around with and experiment with that. Um, I'm going to have to do that a, a little bit more on my channel. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I was using sweet pickens before I, I did fusion, but of course I'm, if I'm going to be selling fusion, I might as well sell their product mm -hmm. and <laughs> use it as well. But yeah, sweet pickens has a lot of, uh, um, better colors, I think, or more yeah. variety, I should more say. More variety, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, that's exactly it. Like it does have a, a huge, like a big variety. There's multiple colors. And um, when I started selling Fusion and I did, I started selling, you know, the, the paint like you, and then I did the the milk paint and I really loved all the colors for Sweet Pickens as well. So I, I sell that now too, but yeah, so it just only makes sense um, to be able to offer all of it, like you said. So now tell me this, how has YouTube helped your business? Uh, well, obviously, um, with my website, it's definitely got me some orders. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, people are finding you, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that helps. And, um, it's definitely, um, seeing all the creative things that you can do. I have now, like before I, I didn't sell any product, um, but I've now, you know, brought in decoupage paper. I brought in fusion and my absolute favorite is IOD and DIY paint. However, my good friend Debbie has the territory. So I've been looking outside of that, uh, other great products to bring in. And mm -hmm. it's just really grown the business in both the booths as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, I say, you know, follow me on YouTube. I have a sign in there and I've gotten a lot of people say we were in your booth and we saw your sign. And so it's, it's definitely getting my name out there, you know, more in the community and um, it's definitely helping, helping my little business grow. That's so great. I'm going to stay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I honestly, I could never not do YouTube. I don't think like I, I know like I recently I saw on YouTube, some creators that have been doing it for years and years have like, are walking away and I'm like, what? Ooh. I could never walk away. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe eventually I'll feel like I ha I want to, but I, I love it so much. I, yeah. it is literally my favorite platform like, uh, to be on. So yes, it's I, my favorite I, one to watch too. So, <laughs> and I feel like, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I just feel like more like YouTube, the viewers are much more kind than sometimes when I put videos out on some of the other platforms. So. Yes. Yes. There but, is definitely a different audience on YouTube. <laughs> absolutely. And they're there to learn. And I love getting feedback too from my viewers. So um, in a constructive, kind way. Yes. Yes, yeah. always constructive and kind. Yeah. Be kind yeah. to one another. Right. Yes. <laughs> so as you are upcycling and getting ready to, you know, come up with your next video, I mean, what 
really inspires you. So when you like decide I'm going to, now you're doing two videos like me a week. So, um, I know some, like today I had a major creative block. Um, and I'm like, come on, come on. I had to like, pre you know, pep talk myself to get into the <laughs> mode. And I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to do. And I wanted to do a video, but for tomorrow and how, how do you overcome that? Or like what inspires you to create? Oh, well, um, anything really. Um, I love nature. I love, uh, especially the spring is my favorite time of the year. So I'll go out and I'll look at all the trees and all the blossoms and the birds coming in and the bees. And I really like, this is a time of year where I really start getting inspired to create with decoupage papers that have the bees incorporated or the birds. Um, color is, is another one like doing certain vignettes with colors, um, just basically anything. If I get a block, I'll go to Pinterest or I'll go to a website and kind of just scroll through real quick and go, I've got that in my basement. Let's, let's upcycle it. Or I go down in my basement and go, okay, what are we going to do today? <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> so yeah, it just is, um, there's always going to be a block at certain times where, okay, you get in a mood where like, Oh, I don't feel creative today or, but you got to push through it. You got to just, mm -hmm. but once I get into that, my studio and start creating, it brings up my mood. It makes me feel happy again, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I, I'll just look at something and go, what could I turn you into? That's totally different, but still functional and pretty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yes. I mean, yeah, a lot of um, creators inspire me, but I, I tend to like, this is my goal for this year is to create outside my box. Like my thinking was I have to do it like this, or I have to do it a certain way, but getting into that artist mode where you don't have to stay in the lines when you color, you don't have to, you know, that's, that's my mentality is type A. Like I have to mm -hmm. color the lines and I have to be so perfect, but I'm finding that when, when you're not perfect, it's so freeing and it just, it turns out better than mm -hmm. you can think, you know, your projects. So it's, it's been a fun transition to kind of go that route, but yeah, I, yeah, I get a lot of inspiration just from being outside. <laughs> awesome. So who are some of your top creators that you loved watching? I know you named, um, you Thank know, you. Other, yeah, me and, and Jamie Ray, but who are Jamie some of Ray. Them? Yeah. Um, I also watch Erin from, oh, Revenge the Australian. Time. Yep. Oh my gosh. So she was on my live the other day. Um, when Heather and I were live, she showed oh. up and it was funny because Heather's like, she's from Australia. And I said, no, she's from Canada. <laughs> And then Heather's like, I'm pretty sure, like, here we are talking about it. Like, I'm pretty sure her accent is Australian. I'm like, I, I think it's Canadian. <laughs> so then we're like, hey, Erin, uh, hey, tell us, like, what are you, know, where, or what are you, where are you from? And then she said, Australia. And yes. so, <laughs> yeah, um, I love listening to her. And also another one is Tracy from Rural Refurb. Oh, I She's from England. Oh, so, yeah, she's got a gorgeous house that she she herself has. Uh, she's very wealthy. It looks like her house is amazing, but she goes to the local thrift stores, finds things and upcycles them. And I just I just love that about her. Yeah. She's not proud of, you know, having to have the perfect stuff in her house. And her house is just gorgeous. Um, and then I did watch Julie's designs and signs quite a bit. I love her aesthetic where she has a lot of the ironstone and the wood tones and the whites. And that's kind of where I evolved. First, I was all farmhouse. And now I've kind of, like you can see in the back, collaborating with antiques and, and all different kinds of things. So yeah, just people that are in that mindset is, is where I am guided to, to watch. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I know I love watching Julie too. Um, and I love how, like her staging, how she stages things. Yes. So. She's taught me a lot on staging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so 
what have, um, you know, like what struggle, like, you know, have you had to overcome any like struggles or obstacles with, you know, that whole creative side or like YouTube side? Um, have you like, even like with YouTube, have you had to overcome any obstacles yet for that? Or has it just been pretty smooth sailing? It's never smooth sailing when you have your own business. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> uh, there's definitely obstacles. Um, Staying consistent, staying in the mindset to be consistent mm -hmm. is key. Boy, I noticed um, when I got sick, really sick, I, I said, I'm not going to be able to have a video today. And then I lost some subscribers. You know, I'm just like, wow, yeah. hey, you just really stay. I have to stay on your game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, being consistent is definitely key. And uh, just sometimes coming up with enough content for two, two videos a week. But, you know, um, working through it. That was one of our things in our group is let's get through our inventory. And so right. I went on a thrifting hiatus for two and a half months and that killed me because I have FOMO, <laughs> uh -huh. but, um, but it was good. It was good to clean out and start fresh and purge. And now I am more on, you know, target buying, but um, still the budget thing. <laughs> So, okay. So did you say you have a budget or you don't have a budget? <laughs> I think I'm supposed to. Because <laughs> okay. it's funny. Like I was trying to come up. I'm like, okay, what questions can I ask her? And then I'm like, I'm confused about this budget thing now. <laughs> like I don't, I, in a normal business, you would have a budget for your inventory, a budget for, you know, I don't, I just, if I like something, I pick it up. And my husband's like, <laughs> do you realize how many, how many things you're buying? Like, yeah, I'll get to them eventually, you know, but then bringing on product, that was another hit for budget. <laughs> oh, I hear you, sister. But, you know, I know. It, it takes money to, to get money. So, um, yeah, eventually I'm sure I'll have a more streamlined budget someday. Okay. But so you don't have a budget when you go to a thrift store. That's kind of like, yeah, yeah, no. And I don't have a budget when I go to a thrift store. It's, it's kind of a free for all. Yeah. Um, but next week I'm going to talk about how I've become a lot more smart about my, you know, what I'm purchasing and why, exactly. because yeah. um, I'm not going to give away all, all my, you know, the whole yes. episode, but <laughs> let me tell you, it has been as I am organizing um, and going through stuff, it's just made me realize a lot of stuff. So that'll be in next week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother episode. Oh my Lord. I, yeah, you guys are going to learn a lot in that one. So, <laughs> um, so, and words of advice, um, because it's, it sounded like, you know, you know, after I did not realize that you had a booth first, then you had a business and then a YouTube <laughs> So, I know I'm backwards on everything, <laughs> but it's kind of funny because it's like, uh, you know, like, uh, with Heather, she had her YouTube first, then she got a booth and then, you know, like it was, I don't even know if, yeah, yeah like, and then like her business at that point. So, um, yeah, it all, it's just, I don't know. It's just different on, on everybody's aspect of how their businesses evolved. Like right. everyone's <laughs> is different. Yeah. Um, so any words of advice for starting off on YouTube? Hit record. Yeah. You're not going to be perfect on your first video at all. Like I'm, I haven't even watched my first video still, <laughs> but you know, that's how you grow. Right. Um, you just keep going and you get better and you learn new things. And, um, you know, just the whole editing, the video was another realm of a learning curve. Um, definitely was scared to, to hop on, but as you get going, you know, you figure mm -hmm. things out and you just got to do it. You just, and you have to stay consistent, like right. make yourself a timeline. Okay. Every Friday at this Mine's not really on a, like a specific hour timeline. I just say I'm going to have a video every Tuesday and Friday. Um, so start out like that. Just start one once a week, once every other week. But the more consistent you are and the more you're on there, the more your your YouTube channel will grow. Right. Oh, absolutely. I agree 100% with that. I had to do a time. <laughs> I'm very like structured that way. Like, okay, this time or this day at this time. And um, so that's what I do, but yes. 
I'll eventually maybe get to a time, but I'm like, nah, <laughs> I'll get it out on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, and you're so correct when you said, um, consistency is key because I realized that very early on that people were waiting for my videos to, to actually, um, upload and, you know, be there. And, uh, if there were like, I just remember when I was having all my internet problems and it was not uploading. And like, I was like here freaking out, like, why is my video not uploading? And, um, they were waiting for me and people would be like, where are you? Why why didn't you upload your video? And I'm like, I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm trying. I, that was like the best thing since sliced bread when I got the right internet. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, (laughs) Honestly, consistency, I would agree with you 100%. Um, now, I know that you started off with, you know, your booth life first and then your business. Um, have have you had any struggles? I mean, it sounds like booth life has been great for you. I mean, you started one and it was great. Then you started another one. Have you had any challenges with your booths? Yes. Um, I tend to kind of go all in. I'm the one that... Uh, jumps in feet first and then thinks about it later. Okay. So (laughs) my first booth was humongous, like huge. And so I, um, struggling to just not have to pay rent, like, cause I was new, you know, you gotta, you gotta, I think start small, start Mm -hmm. with a shelf or a little kiosk. Um, and as people get to know your products and know you as a creator, then work your way up to Mm -hmm. a bigger booth. Um, with me, I was kind of drowning. Like I ended up having to pull out of the big one and get a smaller booth. And then when that was outgrowing, then I got that second booth. Okay. Um, and it's in a different location, which makes it kind of nice. Um, so definitely, uh, I would advise start small. Um, and then, like I said, rent is so different in each vendor mall you go to, like, um, and you have to pay your your um, taxes and on, on top of rent and your commissions. And so be mindful of how much money you're actually spending versus how much you're getting back. Like I was like, oh, I had a couple of sales. I didn't have to pay rent. I'm doing awesome. Well, yeah. I'm not making any money. <laughs> I'm right. just paying rent for, for the owner of the store, you know? Mm-hmm. That's who, like one of my good friends, Jennifer, she's, she's got her own store now. And she's taught me a lot on the, the business side of it. Like, no, you're not making money. I'm like, but I made rent. Like, she's like, but you're not taking home any money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so she's definitely opening my eyes to, okay, now this is a business. I have to be smart about what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And th- like, or like one of my very first episodes, I talked about that, like my booth life and how that evolved. And there was one booth, no matter what I tried, I could never make, it was like all my other booths were like, you know, I was making like a, a lot of money. And then this one booth, I'm like, I tried everything and I, I don't know why I held on for so long. And I'm like, it's, and that's when my mom and dad are like, this is your business on it. You have to like, even though you love that owner of that business, you cannot support him. <laughs> you know, you right? have to support yourself. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And so. another thing is it's, it's like, it's kind of like, you feel like you're, you're a failure if you don't make it, you know, and that's not it at all. No. A lot of times, like you said, it's location, location. Mm-hmm. And do they market themselves? Do they, you know, or how they market uh, themselves? That's right. Promoting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely been a challenge this year again. It's just up and down. So we'll see where it goes. Right. <laughs> I know uh, there's a member in our membership group. She made a really good point that this year, um, because of like across the board, I think like a lot of um, vendors are struggling uh, to make booth rent. Uh, this is going to be the year to see who is going to withstand the storm. And so I don't know you know, what's behind it or why this year has been so rocky. Um, but yeah, it definitely like all of a sudden, like this month started off so strong and then it kind of like slowed down. I'm like, come on. So yeah. I don't know, maybe I I'm blaming it on rummage sales. But 
yard sales are coming in. <laughs> Farm yard sales, but yeah, there's there's it's kind of been scary in the Spokane area. There's been a lot of long term businesses that have shut down. Um, so people are just kind of crying out, buy local, you know, stay away from the big box stores. And so I know we'll see. I, know. I hope that people, you know, can keep that. Well, like small business Saturday. And it's like, that's not the only day that you have to support small businesses. You guys should right. all be support, you know, like people should be supporting small businesses all the time. Yeah. You're around. Um, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's like, there's so much behind each and every single small business, you know, it's like they all put their heart and soul into their business. And sometimes, you know, like those big box stores, it's like, Oh, I know. But I'm like, I'm the type of person, I don't want gifts that everybody else can have. I want something that's just, you know, going to be mine. Like, right. A it's unique. Yeah. Like nobody else is going to have it. Kind of like what Royce was saying. Um, nobody else is going to have that piece of furniture. And so I'm willing to spend a little bit more because I know the person spent a lot of time and energy and the process of, of upcycling and things like that to have a unique piece that's going right. to last a long time other than Absolutely. something that's going to fall apart in six months. <laughs> I, well, I had said a year, but well, I think six months too. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's some things. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. Um, yes. So, well, good. Well, I am so excited to really see how your business continues to grow, how your YouTube continues to grow. Um, I know we're definitely talking about different revenue streams within, um, you know, our membership groups. So I cannot wait to see where you take your business. And um, now if my viewers are want to find you, where are you located? Like, yeah, uh, definitely on YouTube, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. I'll okay. do just on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. I know I made her rip the bandaid off and you know, or like, I, I don't know. Yeah. And sometimes they're like, Oh, you're pushing me off of a bridge sonnet. <laughs> but that's why I work well is under pressure. And sometimes you just have to push me off. <laughs> and then I either sink or swim. <laughs> Right. No, absolutely. Um, so yes, uh, so we can find you on all those platforms. I will have everything linked to in the description. So, but I want to thank you so much for being on my podcast today. Thank um, you. And I know my <laughs> viewers are going to fall in love with you just like I did. Like, like I said, you felt like we were friends, you know, right from the, the very beginning. Um, and they're going to see how extremely talented you are with all your upcycling and, uh, your thrifting and all your good finds. So definitely check Tara out. Um, so in next week's episode, though, guys, I kind of hinted, I'm going to be diving into why I have become a picky thrifter um, to really help control my hoard. <laughs> so um, stay tuned for that for next week. I will be diving into all of that. Um, but if you guys are listening to me on any of the podcast platforms, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so you guys don't miss out on an episode. Uh, you can also find me over on Instagram and Facebook at Sonnets Garden Blooms, uh, where I put out a lot more content. I'm on YouTube as well. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, and we are going to see you guys next week. Thanks, Tara. Thank you. Bye. Bye.